This is the New American Media. Um, broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, California, Los Angeles to be specific. Hello everybody and welcome to the unhappy hour here on the newamericanmedia.com, part of the TNAM radio network. My name is Brian Engelman and I will once again be your host. Thanks for joining us. Today's show is going to be about the Cleveland Browns. I suppose this is an episode of uh, Strictly Browns. We have lots of subdivisions. We do shows uh, Agree to Disagree. I think we're going to be talking about how I was dropped. Mr. Obama, the President of the United States, has canceled my health insurance, despite the fact that uh, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. Uh, If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Total lies. Dropped from my health insurance. Fantastic. Not thrilled about it, but I typically tend to keep most of my politics over on Agree to Disagree. <clears throat> so you can follow us in a whole bunch of different ways that we disseminate our sports shows, our political shows, our spiritual shows, our uh, finance shows, all this, all the different stuff, the music interviews, all the stuff that we do. Check us out in these places, thenewamericanmedia.com. That is our home site, our anchor if you will. Also, also, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, I don't even know how many hundreds of videos over two and a half years we have, but it's youtube.com slash the new American media. You can also follow us on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. That's American underscore media underscore. And on Facebook, if you do a search, it's the new American media with spaces, the new American media. Like our page, check out our content. We do a lot of funny stuff, a lot of motivational stuff, political stuff, spiritual stuff, sports stuff, 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 stuff. But it's not all in one particular spot. So I'll save all of my dropped from Obamacare ranting because I'm I'm really I'm really upset about this. I've been lied to for three or four years about. uh, If you like your plan, uh, you can keep your plan. Uh, If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Period. Total lies. But right now, what what is true? Unlike a lie, what is true is that the Cleveland Browns had a win. What is true is that the quarterback, Jason Campbell, is looking good. The defense is playing tough. What did we hold Ray Rice to on the Ratbirds? Browns beat the Ravens the other day. Nothing. Nothing doing. You know, Rob Chudzinski, keep going for it on fourth down. Devon Bess. Holy Devon Bess. Way to to redemption. I'm really amped. So what I want to do, since since I, I, I kind of covered the Cavaliers season uh, last week with Zach Barris, you can follow that. It's it's on the archive of our Twitter feed, our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and our homepage. Um, I want to get back to the Browns, and I want to bring in special guest Brandon Odell. Brandon's been a co-host on Strictly Browns here at the Unhappy Hour, and he and I were co-hosts on the B&B radio show back at Bowling Green State University. Uh, well, for like three and a half years we did radio over there. A lot of fun. So we'll bring him in where we're going to talk Browns right now, because uh, it's a good time. Talk Browns after a win. Hello. Brandon, you're live on the air, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. How about you? Ah, living the dream. Living the dream, good sir. Uh, so much to talk about with the Cleveland Browns. I, I kind of want to... I was I was just saying in the, the intro that I didn't really get into the Browns last week because almost beat Kansas City. They're sitting there at 9-0. and They're doing something right, and we had them on the ropes. We let them get away. Um, so I'm hoping maybe we could just do a quick recap of the KC game, what we learned, um, then, then really kind of break down the Ravens game, um, then talk about what the bye week is going to do for us now and look ahead to next week. So, uh, yeah, I guess maybe any quick thoughts you had on watching the Kansas City game? Because I, I just feel like we had it and we let it get away, but I, I think we're getting better. Uh, I mean, I agree with that. I think that uh, basically it was a tale of two halves, and I think that the team really seemed to respond well to whatever coaching Rob Chudzinski gave him, you know, during halftime of that game and, and came out and played a good second half. I mean, unfortunately, there were some mistakes, uh, you know, certainly by Devon Best, uh, where, you know, I mean, I think more than anything else, the, uh, the, the, the buffed punt 
uh, really probably cost us that game the most because that was when we really had all the momentum and we were going to get great field position with an excellent opportunity to seize the rest of the momentum away from the uh, from the Chiefs, really quiet that stadium down and be able to you know tie the game or possibly take the lead there. And uh, you know that was with about six minutes left in the game or something. So either way, we you know we let it get away and uh, you know I mean it wasn't certainly just Devon Best that lost us that game. It was uh, it's always a team effort in football and uh, you know the defense uh, wasn't able to stop them in some crucial situations. Their third down defense has uh, not been good all year. Uh, so that definitely was probably, in my opinion, the number one reason why we lost, with uh, Devon Bess uh, probably you know, being a close second with a few plays that, uh, that he really missed for us. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I mean, I, I will say uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, Devon Bess was not the only thing going on in that game why we lost. But what was it three or four dro- two or three what was it or somewhere around three dropped passes that were right there including the one on fourth down that he needed to get and that muffed punt that really did change the momentum it was one of the worst performances of, uh, as a receiver that i've seen in a very long time and it also showed travis benjamin going down with an injury which kind of threw him back there maybe a little unprepared anyway um but you know I, I, let's just bounce right from the worst of the best to the best of the best because uh, I'll tell you what, man, he really came up big. I, I love a good redemption story, and, and I'll tell you what, Devon Best played with 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 the big boys. He really showed up and uh, impressed the hell out of me. How he rebounded against the Ravens. Um, I mean, uh, only three catches, only uh, I think uh, twenty four yards uh, with uh, three catches. But uh, I mean, and and. And considering that one of the touchdowns was a 20-yard touchdown, uh, his other two plays covered three yards and yet may have been the two biggest plays of the game. Uh, the the first uh, touchdown on fourth and one to uh, come up with a really tough catch in traffic, uh, I mean, was, was an outstanding play. And then certainly to extend the drive that really sealed the game there at the end, uh, you know, that was... Uh, that was quite a play that he made, but uh, the little juke move that he put on oh, the, man. Uh, on the defender. I mean, that's definitely the, the ankle stuff breaker. That, uh, yeah, you know, and tear you're gonna tear the dude's ACL, uh, <laughs> you know, making him uh, fall over like that. So uh, that was uh, that was a nice play, that's for sure. Well, I mean, so, I mean that, that almost uh, either that, way it that was could have. I was gonna say that that could have torn the ACL, but I mean, what we're so used to seeing, Brandon, like you said uh, with the KC game, a tale of two halves. What we're used to seeing is, you know, the Browns tearing our hearts out, you know, where it's like you have a game and you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory so many times. Um, but something about this Browns team, they showed us something different in that second half, like you said, where, where Devon Bess, you know, made another huge play to keep that drive going because to kill that time off of the clock, to burn those timeouts from the Ravens, that's how you win in the NFL. And it's been so long yeah. since I can even remember watching us close out a game the way that the big boys are supposed to. Uh, I, I was really impressed by that, Brandon. It really was the second time this year that they've been able to do that. Um, the the first time, <coughs> I would say really the, um, the Bengals, uh, the first time we played the Bengals, we had that nice ceiling drive uh, that, um, and, and that time we closed it out the right way by getting it into the end zone. Uh, it would have been great to see us uh, be able to score a touchdown on that final drive, but uh, either way, with the you know the amount of time that we were able to to kill off the clock uh, was was more important ultimately than anything else. Because I mean, we left them with about 14 seconds to work with uh, there at uh, at the end of the game, and uh, they needed a touchdown. I think it was definitely the right move to go for to kick the field goal there, and rather than going for it again on fourth and and one or whatever from, you know, with uh, with that time left, uh, because you know either way it uh, it was it was a good end of the game, and uh, it was you like you said we uh, haven't seen them uh, finish games the right way, and they're starting to uh, do that a little bit more this season than what we've seen in the past. I mean, let's be honest, they're still four and five. They lost three in a row prior to this game. Uh, there are a lot of things that still are very uncertain about this team but uh you're right they are moving in the right direction and uh you know i think uh most people are starting to see that a little bit we're talking with brandon odell about all things strictly browns uh you know 
you said yes. We 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 were coming off of three tough losses: the 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 Lions, the Packers, and the Chiefs. So my. Um, but I mean, if you look at look at the schedule of this this team, start off with two losses to the the Dolphins and the Ratbirds, and then went on a three game streak against the Vikings and the Bengals and the Bills. Then three losses. Maybe this this really seems to be a streaky team. Kind of reminded me of the Indians this year. You know, they they came out really hot and then they they stunk the place up and they went on a huge streak to wrap up the year, which they needed. I don't know. I mean, what, what does it tell you when a team is streaky versus consistent? Do you take anything away from that as far as coaching or youth? or I, I don't even know. I, I don't know the answer to that question myself, Brandon. Well, a streaky team pretty much indicates the fact that they're not quite ready to take that next step as far as you know being considered a, a true playoff contender, in my opinion. Um, and I think that right now people using that term as being a possible playoff contender, you know, is, is putting the cart before the horse uh, a, a little bit. If they were five and four right now instead of four and five, um, then I could see it. But, uh, you know, there were, like I said, those three losses in a row where, uh, I mean, you, the, you, you really consider the fact that they played a, a good first half with the Detroit game and then basically got dominated in the second half. True. Um, they, for all intents and purposes, were dominated the entire game in Green Bay. Would, wouldn't you agree? I would agree. That one was a laugher. It, it never even got going. So that was just, you know, against a team that was better. I mean, you saw how much worse Green Bay looked with Seneca Wallace at quarterback uh, on Monday night. And so, you know, Aaron Rodgers is – you know he's he's a top five quarterback, if not a top two quarterback, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. So um, you know, I mean, basically, you know, so what you said that's a laugher that you throw that one out. Uh, in Kansas City, we played uh, you know really, I guess a, a truly good second half of that game, um, <coughs> but uh, still just couldn't you know close the deal. So. Um, I guess out of those three, the one that we probably should have won the most, you say, would be the Detroit game because that's at home. The, the next two are on the road against a great quarterback in one and in a an extremely hostile environment against a very hot defense in the other. Um, so throw those two out. If we win the Lions game, we're five and four, four and five. One, if, if they're six and five after the next couple of games then maybe we start talking about playoffs. Playoffs? Uh, well, I, look, I'll give you that. I, I, I will give you that. But, however, I mean, being this close to 500, this deep in the season at the bye week, it's been a while since we haven't been two or three or four games under 500. I, I'm trying to remember back to when, and I know it has happened, you know, once. I'm sure, what was it, maybe the, the 20, 2007, maybe the Derek Anderson year, but... Uh, just in general, since the Browns have come back, it has not been consistent. But um, I want to talk about Josh Gordon because a lot has been made of, of, of that kid, and you've seen his talents. And, and obviously he's not being targeted as much, at least with, uh, with, with Campbell, at least in the last game. Uh, a, lot, a lot of the passes went to Greg Little, but th- there is no doubt that he is an amazing talent um, with a checkered past and, and maybe a little bit of a roll of the dice, wondering if he's one mistake away from being lost for an entire season. But the trade deadline came and went. Were you surprised that Josh Gordon remained on, on the Cleveland Browns, or uh, would they have been completely foolish to get rid of somebody this good um, while we're this close to being maybe not rebuilt, but damn near where we need to be finally? What are your thoughts on Gordon? <laughs> Um, I mean, a number one receiver is definitely something that every team strives to truly have, and not too many teams really have it. I mean, if you really go down the list of the very best receivers in the league, um, I mean, you certainly talk about Calvin Johnson. Right. You certainly talk about Larry Fitzgerald. And... Then you have maybe a little bit of a drop off to the second tier players, and you talk about AJ Green. Um, I mean, who who do you put at numbers four and five before? And 
I'm, you know, being like, be as, as neutral and as objective as possible. Uh, who, who else do you put up there before you get to Josh Gordon? Uh, maybe Houston Texans, maybe. <laughs> Andre Johnson, sure. Andre Johnson, I, I, you know, forgot about him. Definitely him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Deshaun Jackson's solid, but he's he's a little inconsistent. He's not that next tier. Jordy Nelson has stepped up this year, but maybe not quite there. Um, is Jordy Nelson more a product of the system? <clears throat> it's an interesting a West question. Welker, if you will. Interesting question, but didn't Wes Welker also make the Broncos better? Um. And, oh, absolutely. I'm not saying that Jordy Nelson or that Wes Welker are not excellent players. I'm just saying that in terms of being a truly dominant number one receiver, um, you know, I think that uh, neither of them are what you would even consider to be a number one receiver, truly. Okay. But either way, what we're getting at here is is that Josh Gordon... Josh Gordon is upper tier, and uh, if he can show some consistency over the course of you know, a full season and and maybe in, uh, into the next, I think that you have to consider him in that conversation as being a, you know, uh, at the very least right now, even a top 10 receiver in the NFL in terms of just ability and how much defenses have to respect you. Yeah, you, you got a few other names uh, like like Brandon Marshall on, on the Bears, Demarius Thomas. Uh, yeah, pretty solid. But Demarius Thomas, once again, you know, I mean, are they products of the system? <laughs> You know, so, I mean, are they products of the quarterback? Look who Demarius Thomas and Wes Welker have throwing to them right now, and look who Wes Welker had throwing to him when he was in uh, New England. And then look on the other side of things, and Josh Gordon has succeeded with three different quarterbacks this year. That's an interesting point, because there there really is something to getting on on the same... And none of them are anywhere near as good as any of the quarterbacks that you have you know, as being the, the the elite quarterbacks in the NFL, like Aaron Rodgers with Jordy Nelson, like Tom Brady with Wes Welker, you know, like uh, Peyton Manning with Wes Welker. I mean, these are these are elite quarterbacks. These are Hall of Fame caliber quarterbacks. You know, and uh, and then you look at the next level guys like Brandon Marshall. I don't think anyone would argue that Jay Cutler is a better quarterback overall or a more highly lauded quarterback than anyone we have on our roster. Yeah. Okay. I no no oh. no arguments here. So either way, the point is is that uh, Josh Gordon uh, is one of those guys that can make a quarterback look better than he really is. Uh, and uh, I think that the Browns did the right thing by holding on to him. I think uh, that uh, you know just uh, if you bring in another quarterback in the off season, if you draft a, a rookie, you know he needs a player of Josh Gordon's caliber to to grow and to succeed as a quarterback in the NFL. Just like Andy Dalton needs somebody, just like Matt Stafford needs somebody, just, you know. Sure. Matthew Stafford is a much better quarterback because of Calvin Johnson. True. And and nowhere, and, and let's not put uh, Josh Gordon anywhere near Calvin Johnson's territory. And even Josh Gordon at his best, isn't necessarily in Calvin Johnson's territory, but he can approach it, uh, and uh, you know I, it, it'll be fun to see how good he can get. Absolutely, um, you know, talking about how good they can get the Cleveland Browns defense. I mean, held Ray Rice to what was it, seventeen yards on on eleven rushes, something like that, a, a yard and a half average. I mean, what are you seeing out of the Browns defense? Uh, how how much do you contribute? Uh, Mingo returning, uh, you know, maybe the, the the play of Joe Hayden. He's he's, it's it's a little up and down, but I mean, like the 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 unit as a whole. I mean, they're really keeping the Browns in a lot of these games. They they are giving up some points. I mean, I'm not saying that they're they're, they're throwing shutouts, but they're getting enough done where just some decent, solid quarterback play could equate to a win you don't need to be a superstar you know you don't need to throw a seven touchdown game to get wins with the browns i mean what just what are your takeaways with the defense so far with ray horton um you know like you said uh, a little bit of inconsistency there as well uh, i think that uh, certainly in the last uh, few weeks they've uh, they've they've really just shown the ability to uh, I guess uh, get to the quarterback and make some plays, but but once again, I, I can't 
I feel good about it, but I can't really feel great about the defense until I see them starting to get off the field sooner. And I think that this has always been these, uh, this quote-unquote bend but don't break defense. I think we're doing a better job now of bending the other team, bending their offense, but uh, at the same time, too, we're, we're still doing the, the same general thing, which is you know letting teams... Uh, put together long drives against us consistently. So, you know, until we're able to uh, to show for a two- or three-game stretch, uh, you know, I, I still am uh, taking a wait-and-see attitude as far as, you know, it might take the whole season before I decide uh, <laughs> what what I really thought of this year's defense. Well, what, what do you – okay, well, out of the defense, and let, let me rephrase uh, a follow-up then, um, and rephrase it based on what I was thinking in my head, three different things. Um what area of the defense do you think is mainly to blame for giving up all the first downs? Do you think it's more the secondary, the linebackers, the line, or the coaching? Because, or is it just a, a blend across the board that they all don't have it together? Um, you know, I don't think it's that any of them don't necessarily have it together. It's just that I think that uh, you know. Um, for whatever reason, uh, offenses have been able to exploit. It looks like Craig Robertson uh, has been someone that uh, offenses have been able to exploit in the passing game a lot. Um, you know, two of those touchdowns, I think, to that uh, tight end for Detroit, Joseph Boria, were uh, over Craig Robertson, and he's given up some other big plays. So I think that's uh, maybe something to uh, to look at. But uh, you, know, you can't really point to any one thing, you know. But uh, either way, the, the coaches have been able to uh, exploit some weaknesses, and uh, with as much of a pass rush as you can have, you're not going to get to the quarterback every time, and a good quarterback is going to, you know, always be able to be better than a than a good defense, just because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's an offensive game these days, and it's uh, set up to be an offensive game. So, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to make his plays no matter who the defense is. It doesn't just have to be the Browns. And same with Matthew Stafford. I mean, they're good quarterbacks. So, um, either way, uh, you know, did you want to talk about uh, the uh, the bye week here for a few minutes, and then uh, I probably uh, yeah, let's to, let's uh, do the let's do the bye week because you know it, it comes at a time when we're damn near at five hundred. Yes, I know we're one game below. It's four and five, not five and four, not six and three. I I, I like. Better records than than lower, and apparently we're not in the Teddy Bridgewater sweepstakes after all. I thought we were tanking the season when we when we got rid of uh, Trent Richardson. That would have been horrible, but of course the Cavs kind of had to do that after LeBron. So, you know, here at the the midpoint, the the quasi midpoint with our uh, bye week, what happens to this team with, with Chudzinski? Does he does he put some new packages in? Does he get more comfortable with? Uh, I mean, obviously, Jason Campbell. L- l- let's talk about what what the bye week is going to mean for Jason Campbell because didn't he just get get an award today or yesterday? I don't know. If, I don't know. If uh, he... Well, uh, first of all, I do want to go back to your point about the whole Teddy Bridgewater sweepstakes. Oh, okay, sure. You know, no one is really saying anything about the fact that this particular draft is going to have any of these absolute can't miss prospects. I think what they're saying is there are a lot of pretty good quarterbacks. And, you know, I think that you could find out that the Browns are able to get uh, someone that they like, maybe with the Indianapolis pick, and uh, someone with a grade that's really pretty consistent with, you know, a guy that could be drafted in the top ten. You know, quarterback drafting is an inexact science, and it's, uh, you know, kind of uh, a little bit of an interesting you know, there there are a lot of, uh, as uh, the Big Lebowski puts it, a lot of ins and outs, a lot of what have yous uh, in uh, drafting quarterbacks. Uh, so either way, uh, you know, the fact that we might not necessarily get the top overall pick doesn't necessarily mean that we can't really get a quality quarterback. Um, but uh, anyway, going back to Jason Campbell, uh, you know, he was uh, – the AFC Player of the Week this week, uh, which uh, was certainly a cool honor for him, and the first time that the Browns quarterback has done that, and uh, in I think since Derek Anderson in, in 07. Absolutely, week um, two in 07, uh, correct. And uh, when you're talking about what they do with Jason Campbell, I think that uh, they just really um, stay the course. Uh, I, I don't think that Chudzinski has ever been too shy about 
uh, rolling the dice a little bit and about trying different things. So I think you'll can, you'll start to see a little bit more of that. Um, you know, the players really use the bye week not as necessarily a time to install a whole bunch of new stuff, but I mean it's a time to rest up. And uh, I mean they get four days off ma- that's mandated. I think they have practice today uh, and then they're off until Monday, uh, and that's mandated in the collective bargaining agreement. So. You know, I mean, there's. Uh, I think it's more about healing and just getting yourself mentally ready more than anything else, rather than installing a whole bunch of new stuff. So, um, you know, either way, uh, it, it'll be uh, interesting to see uh, where it goes. I mean, he's not a perfect quarterback, uh, but the offensive line has done a good job of uh, pass blocking for him, and he's made uh, pretty good decisions. And uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals now missing Geno Atkins, uh, we're catching them at a great time. So uh, you certainly think that we match up pretty well with them. I mean, uh, we've, we've beaten them already, and we we really, you know, beat them pretty soundly. Uh, so defensively, I think we match up well. We have uh, a number one corner to be able to match up with A.J. Green. And, uh, you know, last time it was uh, some of those secondary players like uh, – and, and let, me, let me rephrase that – some of the um, secondary receivers – for uh, the Bengals that were really, you know, actually making some plays. Uh, so, um, you know, I like our chances against the Bengals, and uh, and I'd certainly love to see us go in there and uh, continue on a high note and, and, and maybe finally get to do something uh, a little bit in the running game, especially once again with the loss of Geno Eck. Now, are we done with the Brandon Whedon era? I mean, he even made a he even made a cameo last week, and I mean, everyone I was watching the game was like, "Oh no!" And sure enough, I mean, he he had a couple of classic Brandon Whedon plays where it just it, the whole team just seems to kind of stink when when he's in charge. I don't really understand it. It's almost like uh, the Peanuts cartoon where like you know, what was it Pigpen has a cloud following him around. It's like he gets in there and everybody just plays differently, and it just, it, 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 you know, it almost reminds me of Le- when LeBron had so many great years with the Cavs, but in the playoffs he got all tense and tight, and the whole rest of the team they all played differently. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, are we done with Brandon Whedon? Like, is is the experiment officially over? He's not co- because we've seen Brian Hoyer do some good things, Jason Campbell do some good things, and and just kind of a whole bunch of duds out of Whedon. Yeah, I think that uh, he's certainly regressed. So uh, I think that uh, you know next season, uh, provided that Campbell is uh, is healthy the rest of this season, which is a big if. Let's face it, we we certainly are, haven't seen the last of Brandon Whedon, most likely. Um, ah. So, but uh, but uh, as far as this season goes, let's say that Campbell stays healthy. I think that you see that uh, Campbell is brought back next year uh, for hopefully something that would be a pretty team friendly contract. Uh, same thing with Hoyer, um, and uh, and you draft uh, a guy, and uh, you know you just be able to kind of see what happens a little bit. So uh, it will be uh, interesting to to see uh, where things go from here. But uh, but yes, it seems like you know not not only was he not drafted by by this current regime, but uh, he hasn't given the current regime a whole lot of reason to really think that he can be uh, an established starter in the NFL. So I certainly see uh, Brandon Whedon. Uh, being gone after this season. Yeah, you know, it was, it was kind of weird seeing that Jason Campbell was drafted in the same class with Aaron Rodgers. You know, you just kind of think, huh, okay. And, you know, I, I just kind of had Campbell pegged as this journeyman, but I mean, three touchdowns, no no mistakes, what, 116 passer rating. Uh, it's it's kind of impressive. Yeah, uh, You know, we do need a running back, though. I, Fozzie Whitaker, we're just signing people off the street at this point, uh, not getting too much out of McGahee, but I don't know. I it's it's been a bit of a roller coaster for this season, you know, being in first place, you know, tied with in first place for a couple of seconds there, and going on some down streaks. But I I am seeing some stuff, some positive stuff out of the Cleveland Browns, and I'm and I'm happy about it. So, um, I guess let's just wrap it up with this. B, what do, what do you see happening against the Bengals? Do you, look into your crystal ball that far out. Uh, we've already beat them once this year. You know, of course, this one will be in their their backyard. Um, what do you think our chances are? I mean, I already said I do. Uh, I definitely like our chances. Um, I think uh, the Bengals play the Ravens this week. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I think a lot of um, how the uh, how uh, Cincinnati is uh, plays 
uh, when we play them uh, will have to do with how they do against uh, Baltimore. If Baltimore uh, plays a good game against them and uh, and you know beats the Bengals, which would be excellent for us. Yeah, would. Uh, I, I like our chances. If Cincinnati starts to get hot again, I think because they lost last week against Miami, they win against Baltimore, they start to get hot again. Um, I think that uh, that could possibly be uh, be trouble for us. So uh, let's see how they do against Baltimore. If they lose. Uh, I like our chances even more. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's good to have you back on the program talking some Cleveland Browns, man. I know, I know, it was, uh, it, it's, it's been a frustrating uh, existence as a Cleveland sports fan. I mean, hence the title of the unhappy hour, obviously. But uh, I, I do get the feeling that they they have a few of the pieces in place that are really going to turn the franchise around. Um, I don't know. I guess, I guess, let me just leave, leave it back to you with any final thoughts. Anything that we haven't had a chance to cover across the league, going to overtime, or just wrap up, what do you think? Any, anything? Comments on Richie Incognito, any final thoughts on the Browns? Anything else burning on your brain? Uh, no, honestly, go Brown. Rock on. Well, hey, Brandon, how about we do this again after a Cleveland Browns win against the against the Bengals? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that would be a heck of a lot of fun. So maybe we should talk in between now and then and see if we can't do this again. Sound all right with you? Well, uh, you know, we'll just uh, wait and see. It is uh, much, uh, much, much different uh, life being uh, a very busy uh, father and worker right now. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't work something out. Well, it's, it's always a hell of a lot of fun having you on the program. So uh, send my love to your loved ones, and uh, we'll be talking again soon. All right, B? Sounds good. Bye. Take care. Thanks. All right, that's Brandon O'Dell. It's always good to have him back on. Uh, he he definitely disconnected just a little bit during the oh you know during the rough times of the Browns. He was just like I don't need this all this negative stuff around me, and I get it. Hence the name, the unhappy hour. But hey, one of these years, one of these days, one of these teams is gonna bring home a championship, and I'm gonna celebrate it. Yes, okay, the Buckeyes, I mean, they do count. It's just, I mean, it's just not Cleveland. It, they, it is like two hours south of Cleveland, you know, from where I grew up. And they are my team there before. And we haven't lost in two years with Urban Meyer. So, yes, I know I have something really good going on there. But, really, I'm talking Indians, Cavs, and, and, and Browns. But, hopefully we can get it turned around. Hopefully. But, hopefully you can also... Follow us. Uh, check out our home page, thenewamericanmedia.com. Search The New American Media with spaces in between on Facebook and like our page. Follow us on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The New American Media. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to come back. I, I, I really want to talk about this. I have... I have... Uh, an issue that I need to discuss because President Obama President Obama stole my health insurance. He kicked me off my plan. Uh, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. Period. Lies, I tell ya. Join me on Agree to Disagree in just a second. And I'll discuss it even more. I'll tell you what happens to the little guy. You are listening to the New American Media.